Hello everyone and welcome, this is Alex, the architect for back 4 app and in today's video I have some great news for you and I'm really excited to start this new series of videos introducing our new feature, the support for GraphQL in PARS. For those of you who are not familiar with GraphQL, it's essentially a querying language for your APIs Basically, it allows you to execute queries in server-side server and retrieve and manipulate data. You can think of it of, of a way to tell your API exactly what information you need and the API will get that information and nothing else. This brings a few advantages, such as smaller payloads and faster transit of data and makes API much API is much more easy to evolve over time because it's so easy to change the code in GraphQL. It allows you to retrieve data from different data sources with just one request uh, from just one URL, making it easier to deal with complex data. Also, it is supported by many, many different languages, which makes coding easier across platforms and just as parse, it's supported by the community and backed by a lot of talented people. And from now on, it is available for you to use with back 4 app. Uh, on this first video, I'll show you how to activate GraphQL on back 4 app, but don't worry, we'll have more videos on future showing how to use it, and hopefully your life will get much easier from this day on. So let's start. So I created my GraphQL application here, and if you go to API console, you'll see the GraphQL console there, which is not available because it asks you to have parse over 350. So I'm going back to server settings, and manage parse server, and choose the 3.6 version, save it. This will take a little while because it will have to recreate all your containers. And there we go. Now if I go back to core and API console, you see I have my GraphQL playground here. So just to show you a few functionalities on this first introductory video, I'm going to create a new class called person. And each person will have a few properties such as name and age and let's manually add a few persons so Alex which is 38 and Davi which is 40 and Alison which is 42 now back to the GraphQL console one thing that GraphQL brought back from the old SOAP days, which REST has lost, is the ability for the client to retrieve the schema of your classes. So the client now can know everything that the API publishes, making it so much easier for you to understand what you can do. I will just refresh this page. And right here I have my schemas, if I open this you see I have the schemas for all the classes that my application has and all the properties that I can set for those classes and also a few methods were already created for me without any produced code from myself. So I created my person class and I have here my create person, update person, delete person methods and a find person right here and a get person right there. So I didn't have to code anything, which is very good. And also, I have created my own documents uh, about how to use that code. So at this point, we support two kinds of operations, which are queries, which are used when you have to retrieve data from the servers, and mutations, which is used when you have to change data uh, on the server, even if you don't have to retrieve the results after. So if I come to objects, you see I have my get person and find person for queries and for find person you see all the documentation of how I can find a person. 
the same the same goes for the object's mutation. If I want to create a person, I have here all the parameters I have to pass in order to create one. So, for this first demo, I'm going to show you how to make a query for a person. One nice thing you'll see here on the uh, GraphQL uh, playground is that you have autocomplete. So if I start typing query, I can just see query and click it and it will show me all that I need to do in order to proceed. So if I highlight it, it will say it's missing some brackets. So from, from the query, I'm going to use the objects and inside objects, I'm going to call my find person method, which I, again I can use uh, autocomplete. So this guy receives a few parameters like aware because I'm going to make a query, and aware receives an object as well, um, where I can put the uh, parameters I'm looking for. So let's filter by age. So I, as you can see, I can also uh, Autocomplete that, and age is also an object. So I, now I can specify uh, the the age I'm looking for. In this case, I'm, let's say I want to bring everyone whose age is 38. So uh, the operation always starts with an underline, and you can see I can, I have equal or not equal or greater than or. Uh, greater than or equal, so let's get exactly equal and equals 38 and now it seems good to go this will bring back a few objects that I can use and, and there, are, there are two kinds of uh, responses I can get first one is count which is the count of objects that match this query and the second one is results, which are the actual results that matches those queries. I can bring any of those results, uh, any of those uh, uh, properties, or both. In this case, I'm going to bring both. But remember when I said that you have to specify exactly what data you want back? So in results, I have to specify what I'm looking for on those persons. In this case, I'm looking for name and age. And it seems good to go. If I just run this, you see the only person that matches my query is Alex, which is 38, and the count is 1. So what if I want everybody who is equal or greater than 38? So greater than or equal. And now I have Alex, Davi, and Alison, and the count of 3. If I only need the name, I can just retrieve the name, which has a smaller payload to send. So, this is an intro introductionary video, so it's very short, I just wanted to show you how to use it. Don't worry, you have many more videos about this, and you get deep into this uh, GraphQL new feature of Backfrap. So I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, brings a lot of possibilities for you developers and I hope to see you on the next videos, so see you soon, bye bye!